The journey is over. Come in from the cold and rest from your travels on the road to Bethlehem, for it is God who meets you here. Glory to God in the highest. The journey is over. Just as Christ came in low estate, he comes even now to those who are humble in heart. Glory to God in the highest. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. For unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. We praise you, O God, for you are the beginning of the journey of life. Your spirit is our companion along the pilgrim way, and it is Jesus who awaits us at the end. Even as he came to Bethlehem as a babe, he comes into our hearts now in love. For hope, peace, joy, and love, we praise you. For the word made flesh, we thank you. And for the grace that sustains us all our days, we worship you. Amen.
Will you please join me in our unison prayer of illumination? The days are hastening on, O God, by prophets seen of old, when with the ever-circling years shall come the time foretold. Help us be those who give back the song which now the angels sing. May the melody of love that we sing beckon the wondering, strengthen the wandering, and welcoming the traveler home. Amen. Our first reading comes from Isaiah 9, verses 1 through 7. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the later time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked into darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of the deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. You have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born unto us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. 
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee in Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final reading from Scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke. Listen now to the Word of God. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people for to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And there suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven... The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. 
When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before turning to my sermon for the evening, I want to say welcome to worship with Davidson College Presbyterian Church. We are so grateful that you joined us for this pre-recorded service of lessons and carols. Your presence with us is among the many reasons that we give thanks to God in this season of Advent. It's been throughout Advent that we have been journeying on the road to Bethlehem. We have stepped out on the highway to our God in the wilderness. We have listened for the voice of John the Baptist. We have answered the door and opened our hearts and our homes to fellow travelers. And tonight, we find ourselves at the stable. I am grateful that you are present with us. And I'm grateful for everybody who supports our ministries with their giving. It is thanks to you and your giving that we are part of the way that God declares to the world that the light still shines in the darkness. I can tell you right now there are people in homes because of your giving. There are children who are fed because of your generosity. There are families who have hope for the future because of what you have given. And so thank you. And again, thank you for being with us on Christmas Eve worship at Davidson College Presbyterian Church. Crash, nativity set, manger scene, stable, however you choose to call it, the world has no shortage of artistic renderings when it comes to the night of Jesus' birth. And whether you think Jesus was born in a stable, the traditional view, or a first century Palestinian living room where the animals were kept only at night, the alternative view. However you see him, the little baby in the manger, there is a plethora of offerings when it comes to the various scenes that we manipulate on our mantles and on our hutches. Now, my Aunt Sharon, she at least last I knew, is a Hummel fan. My mom went through a willow tree phase, and now she prefers buyer's choice carolers. And those of you with young children, perhaps you remember with the Henrys, the Fisher Price nativity scenes. And for some of us, those remain primarily in our attics now that our children are growing up. And we all know that there are far more nativity scenes out there than just those. The crushes, they range from hand-carved wood to finely painted porcelain to the mass-produced plastic. They might be historically accurate with the olive-skinned Jesus, Joseph with the dark hair, the teenage Mary. And still others of the crushes might be themed, like with Star Wars, where we would find the Jedi with Obi-Wan as Wiseman, Anakin as Jesus, Darth Vader as Herod, the Emperor as, well, the Emperor. The Mandalorian is an angel of the Lord and Baby Yoda. I don't know what he would be, but you got to have Baby Yoda in there. Just know Jar Jar Binks. You know, about that Star wars theme nativity set, it seems like that galaxy far, far away is becoming a bit overpopulated now that Disney has announced 10 more shows to stream on Disney Plus in the coming years. And the same is true, that overpopulation for many of our major scenes. I'm talking about the real manger scenes. I'm talking about our lives. You know, the stable of our lives into which we invite Jesus to come every year, they get a little crowded over time. Now, the stable in which Jesus nursed at his mother's breast, it too was filled. It was filled with nervous parents, smelly animals, scruffy shepherds, magisterial magi, the air moist from the breath of a score or more of lungs, the air fetid from malodorous human beings and beasts alike. The stable of our lives into which Jesus comes every year, it's populated differently, but it's no less crowded than the original scene. Like that first major scene, our lives, well, our lives are filled over time. Silent spaces in the shadows occupied slowly, the picture finally coming into focus, a 4D stable scene that is overcrowded and overwhelming the stable of our lives each Christmas. The ear around the little hollow in our hearts into which we bid Jesus come. For some of us, that air is thick. 
with disappointment. And for some, there is the smell of decaying dreams. The pressure to be what family, friends, and the community want you to be. It leans in on you. It pushes you down even further toward the manger, forcing you to bend a knee, but not to the Christ child, but to what everyone wants you to be. And then there's time breathing down your neck. It gives you chills as the air tickles your nape and reminds you of the sands falling through the hour class. Judgment is over in the corner while the world's acrimony is trying to wind its way in through the stable, trying to incite you and others to anger. The scene is punctuated, punctuated by the beat of bad news in the newspapers, thumping its way down the streets, down the alleyways of our lives, reminding us what is out there. Meanwhile, pandemic disappointments still proliferate. Even now, they are piling up in the corner as quickly as they are delivered, as prolific as the Amazon packages on our doorsteps. Those pandemic disappointments, they're about four months too early. They seem to be pinning their hopes on that other Christian holy day, looking to resurrection. Presbyterian theologian Tom Eric notes that Christmas isn't so much a season where we offer our best to God. Eric honestly and accurately, I think, says that Christmas is when God instead offers the Lord's best to us. We, we are in a dither of gift giving, he says, year-end performance reviews, family expectations, flights of nostalgia, and this year the added burdens of loneliness and loss into that stable, filled with what is far short of our best, Jesus nonetheless comes with God's best. And as we kneel in the midst of the crowded stables of our lives into which Jesus is born anew each year, what we really want, what we really need is indeed the Lord to bring God's best, to transform what we have made of our lives, to redeem what has happened to us and happen to the ones whom we love. We long for God. We long for God to bring justice to the world, to silence the expectations, to soothe the anger, to soften the sense of judgment, to relieve, to relieve the pressure of time, to heal our hurts, to sweeten the air, and simply to love, to love us, to love us in a way that no thing and nobody can. We want to know love. This gift of love does come, but it seems a vulnerable thing. Too often fleeting, love's light flickering from the lack of air. So hard pressed is the space around that love. The air consumed by the ragged breath of all who gather around that small circle of light. And yet, it is love. It has always been, it will always be God's love for you, God's love for you. This love of God often seems a fragile thing. So quickly does the world try and extinguish the light. It is a fragile thing, the word become flesh, the child in the manger, the light that still shines in the darkness, such fragility, such vulnerability, it seems a fearful thing that God loves us so much, loves us enough to send Jesus whether we feel deserving of that love or not, a fearful thing that we can be so loved that God risks God's Son in becoming flesh, especially when we feel the least deserving, we frail creatures of dust. Our hard lives soften sometimes only by the tears that run down our cheeks. It is a fragile, fearful thing, this love for you. 11th century Jewish poet Yehuda Halevi says it well. It is a fearful thing to love what death can touch. A fearful thing to love, to hope, to dream, to be, to be. And oh, to lose thing for fools, this and a holy thing, a holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me. 
To remember this brings painful joy. Tis a human thing, love, a holy thing to love what death has touched. A holy thing indeed, this love, this love of God whose hope sweetens the air in the stable of our lives, this love of God that comes to you for no other reason than this. You are a beloved child of God. This love of God for you and Jesus, it is alpha and omega. It is beginning and end. This love banishes the rule of time over our lives, for in God's hand is all time and time enough to be loved. This love suspends all judgments as it is the mercy of God. This love of God and Jesus brings joy and it asks nothing of us except that we love as best as we can. Love as we have been loved. If God can move past and deal with all that crowds round Jesus in the stable of our lives and our world, then maybe, maybe we can remove ourselves from their presence as well. When the stable of our lives is too crowded with the fears that ring round and the pressure that threatens to push us away from the warmth of the light of God's love, we can just get out of the stable. After all, Jesus did not linger long in that small space, literally or spiritually, but Jesus burst its bounds and entered the world in the fullness of life, in the fullness of our lives. If we follow Jesus out of the narrow confines into which we have tried to lay him, we find that we can once again breathe. Breathe in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, breath no longer ragged from trying to run the race that others have set. Now we walk beside Jesus, who matches our pace on the road from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. Maybe Willie Nelson was right after all. On the road with Jesus out of the crowded stable, we recover the sense that God is bigger God is mightier than our problems, that because of God, we are more than what besets us. We are more than what besets us, whether it be grief or depression or fear or addiction or illness or anger. We are more than what threatens to undo us because we are the Lord's. Outside of the stable, with its unwelcome inhabitants, we remember we remember that we are connected to something and someone bigger than ourselves. Scottish theologian John Philip Newell, he suggests that the journey of the Western Christian church and those of us in its small crowded stable is to get out of ourselves and to let go and to let the flow of the loved one that is deep within us, to let this mighty subterranean river of God that courses through all things take us out beyond ourselves. Standing outside of the stable, breathing deeply once again. In the darkness, we see the light of God from the stars of heaven. We see the light of God in the lives of those who have also, with the aid of the Holy Spirit, burst the bounds of the stable and now live the lives of love that are given to us in Jesus Christ. The light does indeed shine in the darkness as we step out from our stables that are oh so crowded, the stables into which Jesus comes and from which Jesus bids us go with him. May you know his presence on all of your roads of life and love and faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, oh.
friends, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us offer our prayers for each other and for the world around us, using the words, O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. Let us pray together. God of grace and Lord of love, we've journeyed through this Advent season on the road to Bethlehem and now join with Mary and Joseph, the angel chorus, and with eager shepherds to proclaim with praise the wonder of your goodness and love for all creation. The blessing of your gift calls us to faith and to worship, and we call to you now in prayer as we lift the concerns of our hearts. O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for the church universal, that we might be a faithful witness of your love and grace for all creation. Forgive our waywardness and help us to make amends where our practices have caused pain and created division, isolation, and loneliness. May we daily seek unity, peace, and faithfulness. With Mary, help us to treasure and ponder the gift that has been given to us, a gift of good news and great joy for all. O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for this world where a vaccine for COVID-19 provides hope and optimism in the midst of this global pandemic, where essential workers need support and rest, where wars, poverty, and climate change continue to threaten the livelihood of your people, especially those who are most vulnerable. With the prophets, help us to proclaim the promise of your peace for all nations and your justice for all people. O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for this community where we're trying to build bridges and find healing from a history that's not been fair to all its citizens, where families are exhausted from disrupted routines, unusual school schedules, and screen fatigue, where we're trying to learn how to care for each other, value one another's opinions, and learn from our mistakes. With the shepherds, Help us to keep watch over those entrusted to our care and all who need protection this night. O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for our loved ones, for those who grieve, those who are struggling with illness, those who are alone and isolated this Christmas, those who are struggling to make ends meet, those who are anxious and afraid, and those who are facing difficult decisions. With the angels, help us to offer signs of hope, comfort, and joy for all who live in fear. O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, hope of the world, help us to bear witness to your light so that all may believe and have life in you. In your holy name we pray. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, 
but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, as you go out into the night, may the warmth of the stable envelop you, and may the light of God's love illumine your path. And in all things, may the peace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the power of the Holy Spirit sustain you, that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, not just this most glorious of nights, but all nights. 
and all days. Amen.